Hello, my name is Tom Boyd from the CA Ops MVS Engineering Team. In this video presentation, I'll be discussing the new SSM v3 user column administration panel interface and other policy related items that are new for the system state manager and is available with CA Ops MVS release 13.0. Today's agenda will feature an overview of this enhancement, along with all prerequisites needed to use it, activation requirements, and operational aspects, then a functionality demonstration. The SSM v3 user column administration is a continuation of the development effort toward the system state manager or SSM Simplification and Policy-Based Administration Project. With the initial implementation of this project, only those CA Ops MVS specific columns and column data for SSM monitor tables were discovered. With the new expanded functionality in place, SSM monitor tables that contain customized or user-defined columns and associated data will be automatically discovered. A new OpsView UI or user interface option from the OpsView SSM Policy Manager 411P panel option UC is now available to access the user columns administration panel. From this new user interface, an A or D line command can be used for adding or deleting user columns to or from the policy. From the OpsView 411p.r resources panel option, editing or browsing a resource in step through or not in step through mode, a new SSM user data panel will be available when a user column exists in the policy. When in edit mode, the data can be updated via new dialogues specific to the policy editor. With the latest CA Ops MVS 13.0 incremental release implementation, you will have to apply the Agile PTF RO93591 to use this functionality. Refer to the migration section and the release notes for more information on this topic. The environmental information shown is a visual aid for the demonstration, showing the background of the office environment being used. The featured demonstration will be performed on the CA mainframe CA31L PAR in the Ops KQA Ops main address space. Following activation steps will be necessary to implement this feature. Step 1. Install the OPS 13.0 incremental release. Step 2. Receive and apply the OPS PTF RO93591 to your SMP environment. Step 3. Set your OPS SSM version parameter to a value of 3. Step 4. Start the OPS main address space. Following our steps to verify you have the environment set up to exploit the SSM v3 user columns administration functionality. Verify you're running with the OPS MVS 13.0 incremental release. Verify that you have the Agile PTF RO93591 received and applied on the incremental release. Verify that you have the OPS SSM version parameter set to a value of 3, activate your OPS main address space. If you have an existing OPS SSM environment set up where tables are being monitored, this can be verified via the OPS view 4.11.1 panel. From the OPS view 4.11 system state manager panels, you should be able to see option P for the policy manager. If you select this, you should now see the new UC option for user columns. 
This is validation that you're ready to utilize the functionality. Note, if you already have a user-defined column or columns set up in your SSM monitor tables, then if you select the option UC, those columns should be discovered automatically and appear in the column list. Hello. Purpose of this demonstration is to show the SSM v3 user column administration enhancements. From the new OpsView 4.11.p.uc user column administration panel option, some of the field characteristics of the user column administration panel include the following. The user column field, the table field, the in policy field, the message field. User column field indicates the name of the user-defined column added to the actual SSM monitored resource table. The table field identifies the SSM monitored resource table name corresponding with the user column field data. The in policy field indicates with a Y or an N value if or if not the column is part of the actual policy definition. Finally, the message field this is an informational message field that indicates when a line command such as an add or delete action has been issued. In this case, test by using the A add the policy line command. For this particular user column resource, in this table, TBQA copy, the in policy flag was now set to Y and the informational message added to policy was indicated. Conversely, you can actually use the D line command to delete an entry from the actual policy. This user called DEC1, which is currently in the policy, issued the D line command. You can see now the flag value is set to an N and the message comes up deleted from policy. Line command refresh is available to clear out the message field. Additionally, you can filter on columns and table names. In this case, I'm going to filter on a particular group of uh, columns associated with the table TBQA test one. You can use wildcarding to do this particular filter. You can see the remaining column entries for that particular table. Additionally, for user column values, you can filter on a particular suffix as well to exclude those that are unwanted. And you can use wildcarding on this as well. Let's see, now all my column names that are shown have a prefix of user asterisk. <clears throat> Thank you. Hello. The purpose of this demonstration is to show the SSM v3 user column administration enhancements. From the OpsView 4.11.p.r SSM resource list panel option, browsing and editing a resource which is resident within a table that has user columns defined and were added to the policy from OpsView 4.11.p. Dot UC should now be available within the resource editor. For the demonstration, I'm going to walk through In step through mode no, edit a resource. And this resource is a bogus resource, so 
we'll get some information such as job name required and so forth. Instead of filling in all the information, it's going to go right to the target uh, user columns that we're looking at here today. So the user columns is a new set of panels that are available in order to get the user data updated and into the policy. So if I click on this and hit enter, because it's a point and shoot field, it should take me right into edit mode for this particular res A resource. Some of the characteristics of this particular panel show the resource name, which is res A, the table name, which is TBQA test one. What these are, the resource name is the target resource name that was selected to edit or browse, of course. And the table name is the actual target table that corresponds for that selected res resource or this particular resource. In addition to that, there's some other fields here, the user column. And... This is the name of the actual user columns that have been defined to the actual resource policy. They were added in through the OpsView 4.11.p.uc. With that, we have a type field, which shows the actual uh, SQL data type for each column value. And the actual column value is the column value displayed for each individual resource or the actual data that's available for each particular resource. For more information on the type field and the column data, you can hit PF1. This is our help menu. It shows you what the uh, three-digit type field are representative of for each of the values and all the values that are monitored. In edit mode, <clears throat> you can actually update, make changes to the resource directly from here by t over typing some of the values that are showing up right on the screen by tabbing over to the column value and over typing the value. So if I change this, obviously it's a hex field, so I'm going to change it from an E, F to an E, and that's perfectly acceptable. Some error checking is, is in place for these uh, particular values in analyzing the data type. So if I change it back to an F, then modify it again, change it to, uh, we'll say, a K, which is not a legitimate hex character, you can see popped an ISPF short message in the upper right-hand corner showing its invalid data value. And if I PF1, I should get a longer message showing me more detail about this particular message. In this case, it's saying it's an invalid hexadecimal string. Value contains invalid hex characters, which we know a K is not valid. Same is true with all the other uh, data types. As, as an example, the, the date field or the uh, timestamp field or purely dates, if I try to make a modification, change the year in this field to an M, you can see I get the invalid data. And hitting the extended help on it, you can see it's in invalid date format. Uh, same is true with a timestamp field. Try to change this to a Z, invalid, you know, invalid timestamp value shows you the actual format. So in addition to being able to over type the actual column value, I can use the S line command next to the adjacent to the actual column value and it throws me into an editor where I can update or make my changes from as well. Back out of here. Cancel out of here. Now, just for the sake of this testing, I'm going to go back in in step-through mode. 
hopefully you're familiar with. And in this case, I'm going to browse this resource, another resource in step through mode. And the reason is otherwise I'd have to fill in every value. So I'm just going to step through browse mode. So you can see I'm in step one of six and navigating forward through these panels. And these are the policy panels that were previously available. So right now we're on the details, PF6, step two of six, I'm on the activation, three of six, I'm in the inactivation, four of six, I'm in the recovery, finally five of six, it took me to the new SSM user data data field. So again, because I had to go through step through mode and I went and actually decided to go into browse mode, I try to select one of these columns and make an update. You can see the editor throws me into a, a browse mode, so it's impossible to make a change from here. So it's true with the actual field value on the actual panel itself. I can't make any no changes that are allowed to be made. For more information on this topic and about the CA Ops MES product, please visit docops.ca.com and support.ca.com. Thank you. To summarize in this video, we've introduced and presented an overview of the SSM v3 user column administration. We've reviewed the prerequisite steps needed for using the feature. We reviewed how to activate the enhancement. Lastly, we demonstrated how the functionality works. Thank you for viewing this video. To learn more about CA Ops MVS, connect with other CA Ops MVS users, and share your own expertise, visit the event management and automation community at the URL shown. This concludes training on the new SSM v3 user column administration enhancement. For more information about this feature and all things CA Ops MVS, please visit support.ca.com and docops.ca.com. Thank you.